Hello, welcome back to Network Root. I hope you're having a good morning, evening, good night, wherever you are. Afternoon. Afternoon. I've got afternoon. Good up morning, afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Hey, actually captured the right Chrome tab. I've got multiple Chrome tabs open, so I don't know if that would actually work. It did. Okay. It worked. This is our first news story for today. It ties an uh, article that we found on TheVerge.com. Yeah. It is titled, She Created a Fake Twitter Persona, Then She Killed It Off With COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, I, I figure that you've added this because we watch a lot of catfish. Part of it, yes. Part of it. I don't know, it's like a, yeah. a smaller news story, but like at the same time, it's like well, It came up on the tech news and I thought, wait, what? But like, I guess it would because it's to do with Twitter. And I guess so. Something was It's off interesting about that the, the it seems service. like they actually had a memorial service for this person. Yeah, it's just, it's something was off about the memorial service for the anonymous anthropology, anthropology professor, yeah. Yeah, who died exactly. of COVID 19. For one, only four people showed up. I mean, that the fact that anyone turned up for the funeral of a non-existent person is pretty awful. Yeah. And it says co-founder of the support network Me Too STEM had recently been accused of harassment herself. Okay. And obviously, I assume these are people who showed up. Her distinguishing characteristics on Twitter. Hmm. I just thought it was weird, really. I'm like, wait, what? It kind of reminds me of Catfish, because we watch a lot of Catfish, to be fair with you. Yeah, why construct a, high, a Twitter persona only to kill them off in the moderately high-profile COVID scandal? Yeah. Can they grow up your... Is, is COVID a scandal? Is that the uh, right word? I think... I oh, think really? I think saying... that's the right word there. Mm, I that's... think they're trying to say... Yeah. I think they're trying to say something... COVID, that's absolutely about. scandalous. No, I like it. Okay. I can think of a few reasons. Money and security boredom of fame. None fully explain the length McLaughlin went to make a uh, sciencing buy seem real. It veers into the territory of Munchinson syndrome, where people fake illnesses in order to get attention. All right. Mm. Weird. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me. You think it's weird. I don't know if that's necessarily news. Like, it's just someone pretended to be somebody else. And, like, I know. She, she, like, had quite an active STEM role, like science, technology, engineering. Yeah. Um, it's just weird. I, yeah, that's what I mean. I think it's quite, it's like a catfish episode. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If you, if you scroll down. I was reading through this. It's just bizarre. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Okay, sorry. Keep what, scrolling. Did I miss something that you wanted Keep to scrolling. talk about? Keep scrolling. Keep going, keep going. Like here, it says like reflected like my state university just cut my salary by fifteen percent. They also kept my school open, and me teaching well past when they knew it was unsafe to be in crowds. No, I won't answer questions. Like this is like the the the, the, the pretend yeah. person saying this, but then yeah. like killed her in a tweet thread announcing the death. The 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 person wrote. She was meaner and more loving than everyone else. Later, she added, she wasn't nice. She was powering and she what? worked so stinking hard. Reading the message, it, it didn't feel like a grift. It felt like a fantasy. I mean, you can sort of see that, can't you? Like, the person wasn't talking about a made-up professor anymore. She was talking about herself. The way she wanted to be seen, the outpouring of sympathy was immediate i think it's weird that's just weird man yeah that and obviously i i'm i was curious how much the actual like twitter profile had follower wise you know what i mean um it's I very you'll ever find no it doesn't now. say it's just very weird to think about like i don't understand why someone would go to all this effort of doing it just to kill off somebody i don't know maybe it's just it, me yeah. come on Highlight, search Google for art science in. Science Twitter, how to identify fake profiles. I just think it's weird. I think, like, people do it to, to um, gain a following type thing. When they don't need to do it, but they yeah. do it because they can. 
Maybe that's just my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else we can say about that other than it's just weird. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, it doesn't seem clear, give you go in it, how big a profile she had. Profile she actually had. No. That being said, it must be quite big or it wouldn't have got this kind of attention, right? No. Yeah. That's I find the, the whole idea of catfish, catfishing people pretty, like, strange. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. really understand. No, I don't understand either, don't worry. Like, I don't understand why people would do it to begin with. I, I, I guess I can see, like, certain sides of it, but, like, I just don't genuinely understand why people would do it. I don't know, maybe that's just me personally, I don't know. Should we move on? Yeah, sure. Oh my. That hurt my ears, I'm Christopher. I'm so sorry, chat. You need to not click on them because it does it all the time at the minute. Yeah, I it's know. It's a get. I didn't mean to click on it, I was trying to right click. Do you like? The best new gear from IFA 2020. If you don't know what IFA 2020 is, it's like a it's the European version of CES basically. I didn't know what it was. I just kind of added it because I thought, oh, new gear. It's What's like that? a tech. It's like a tech and consumer. This is a Europe's main tech conference. Yeah, it's going to be different this year, but the gear still came even if people didn't. From bike lights to headphones, folding phones to secret selfie cameras, we found the best. Sure. So this is just yeah. wide.co wide.co.uk rather. Yeah. Um, they've just done an overview of what they think is most important, so I thought it'd be worth just having a look, seeing what there is coming up. Obviously, we've got a Samsung, I've got an ultra short throw laser projector, which I don't know like how interesting that is. I mean, I'm into projectors, right? And I'm not that excited. I don't know. 80. Wait, what? The Is Axon FTA, 20. Axon 25 gig. Okay. Yeah. What's that? A phone. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. What? We've finally got there. No notch, no hole punch, no pop up cameras. This is the first phone available with an under display camera. Oh, what does that mean? It means, you know, like my phone has like the thing where it goes and the camera pops out the top. Yeah. And it doesn't have that. The camera is literally under the display. Oh, interesting. So you can take a picture with it just looking like that. That's crazy. Oh. Despite cracking this issue that's been bothering all manufacturers except Apple, which doesn't seem to care about having the they don't disgusting care. notch at the top. Yeah, I don't care. Dead is yet to confirm the price or release date for the Axon 20. We do know it has a 6.92 inch OLED screen. Uh, yeah, as you'd expect. A 765, as you'd expect. Which is also in the Nord, one plus Nord handset. Sure, 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 sure. Sixty-four megapixel camera now. Oh my God, it's going higher and higher. Like, is that things... why it says it capable of capturing four K? Yeah, I mean, At mine's capable of capturing four K, but like, is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. But it's, I mean, mine's fifty fifty-two meg, I think. Oh, okay. The rear camera. Oh, interesting. What's that? You're scrolling down too fast. Oh, JBL Club Pro Plus Watch. I mean, I'm not that excited about earbuds, to be quite honest with you. To be fair, I think the last one we looked at, like, eight hours of actual life. We had either last week or the week before, and earbuds in. This is just a Samsung's Samsung's version of that, like, three pad charger. Oh my god, I didn't mean to open that. I'm so sorry. So you can charge a phone, headphones, and a watch, whatever. That's not exciting at sure. all. Citation 200. Um, what the hell is this? Harman's new portable speaker, first real at CES, is a little Bose Sound Link Revolve Plus in design. It's a static direction as it looks better than previous versions. HK's answers to Sonos. It can Sonos. operate both on Wi Fi and Bluetooth, means a rechargeable battery. Okay. I mean, it's too That doesn't seem very, like, cutting edge or anything. I don't look see much, what... Look at the price. It's too... Yo, yeah. For these really good speakers, you pay a fortune. Mm. Like, Sonos has been, like, great for years. It's not... There's nothing new there. And you get a measly 5 out of 10 people step at the room for improvement. I don't really think you can grade the original Fold. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know. I don't really know what the original right. Fold looked like. We've talked about it on stream before. We have talked about it on stream before, but it's been a while since we've talked about it. It's the one that like opens up like a book. Oh, that 
one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, maybe not. The £1,800, that's UK, Jesus. That's so expensive. Hunk of rework folding phone, major improvement. And actually, they've actually got a full screen on the front this time. Thank God. Did they not have it before? No. no. <laughs> it was like four inches because it was like a prototype, it's basically. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Okay. Plus all the usual multi at refinements and 5G. In other words, now for haven't seen it in person minutes. yet, but Samsung's moving in the right direction. Yeah. This 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 looks an awful lot better than it did a few days yeah. ago, uh, a few months back. It probably does look better, but the fact is, it's so Have expensive. You, do you remember the original? I mean, this is. I think we edge. had a look at it a few weeks back. Galaxy Fold One. Oh, right. I had like the weird. That That's what it used to look like. Folded. Oh. That was the, sc the full screen. That's ridiculous. That's tiny. <laughs> yeah. That was everyone's comment. It was like, wait. It's so small. How am I supposed to use it when I don't want the full screen? Oh, well, yeah. So, like, not. obviously, they're going. They've learned from that. I made it a bigger screen. I made a bigger screen. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be the first model, which is like actually four people. Sure. The price doesn't upset me as much as, like, I think it upsets you. Probably not. I mean, you can pay over a grand for an iPhone. Yeah, you can. And this is brand new technology, a, a fold-in display, which mm -hmm. has got an R&D cost associated with it. Sure. It's got, like, mechanical work working parts, which need vigorous testing to make sure that's right. Yeah. I don't know. It's got, Maybe it's, it's got double... It's got essentially got a tablet... And a phone in one. I think and we talked way about that. Battery. I'm sure, we talked about this a few weeks back though, because it was on CES when we had a look at it. We talked about the Surface one. Maybe then it was Surface, which was two screens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. That. That's we what you're thinking looking? of. What's that? <sighs> Wireless headphones again. Oh. I'm, again, I'm not. Honor Magic Book Pro. How does that sound like to you? A MacBook Pro. <laughs> yes. Doesn't. It's not like fooling anyone, is it, in the uh, marketing? No. A 16 inch laptop under a thousand? There must be a catch. Well, oh, it's powered by the lower cost, though very impressive Ryzen 5 rather than Intel. Sure. And it's 1080p res screen, it's good graphics program. Is that how much it is? Is that what I was trying to say? It's for like, is that, is that how much it costs? 850? Looks like it. Okay. It's not ridiculous. It's still, it's... though, it just looks like an Apple product. I don't understand why it looks like an Apple product. Because Apple products can be sold for a lot of money. Yeah, but <laughs> still. So they, they are trying to emulate it. Yeah, they are, I know. Panasonic Climax S5. Okay, so there's new DSLRs coming out. 1800. Oh. I'd love a new DSLR, but I can't justify it. No, it's too expensive. I couldn't justify paying that much money. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, I could justify paying it, be like, oh, yes, I really want it, but I'm not going to. Maybe if there was, like, What's... 100 oh, people camera. watching. Interesting. I could justify it. Security camera. Sure. I found the LG PuriCare interesting. Yeah? It's a active face mask, right? Yeah. It's got a filter in. Okay. It's got a battery in. It's I'm got... sick of face masks. And it's got fans, so it, like, blows the air in. Oh, okay. I'm still sick of face masks, though. Is equipped with UV LED lights to kill harmful germs. Yeah, it's that's that's in the case though. Sure. Yeah, I guess so. It's not on your face. No. Okay. So you put it in the case and it like shines it with UV light mm. to clean it. It's not bad. I just, I just don't know. And Philips we've got Philips Hue here. Finally, it looks like they're actually getting a programmable strip. Catching up with the rest of the industry. It costs two hundred and twenty. Yep, and they're charging it ridiculous as they always do. Well, the fifty-five inch is one hundred and sixty, and there's wait, well, yeah, fifty-five is one sixty, sixty-five is one eighty, seventy-five, and wait, which Philip Hue says fits up to seven, seven, like what fits on? Are you having like a back. bit of a stroke reading this? Yeah. 
Can't read. All right, what's the difference between the situ play strip and the predecessors is that the play is easier to attach to the back of your TV because of the rounded brackets that come with it. There are three different sizes for which to choose. 55 inch strip costs 260, 65 is 180, and the 75 inch strip is 220. All right, yeah, that just so that's obviously just for different size TVs. Yeah, it says that. This is like a technology which, like, if you've got orange around the edge here, yeah. right, the mm -hmm. light behind your TV will be orange. Sure. Obviously, for us, like projector folk, this is useless. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, so yeah, but if it. you still have a TV, it's you worth having something like this, right? Mm. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Sorry, I've got to check for Mario Kart. Go on, man. Uh, forget boring new race car. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit might be the coolest Mario Kart installment yet. Cool. Oh, it will cost a hundred pound for on set. Don't know what that means. Neither. No, neither. Do you know what's really bad? Babe, what? We've just gone live, and I need the toilet. My God. I literally asked you before we went live. Yeah, but I didn't need to go then. I need to go now. The display technology has been lurking, lurking in the shows until it turns to strike. TLC, TCL's next paper isn't exactly e-ink, it sounds very similar. Combination of screen and paper is colour with a reflective screen that doesn't need backlight. Or higher contrast in LCD and is 36% summer. The real benefit aside from my protection from blue light and flickering is the battery life. It's 65% power. more power efficient than an LCD. I mean, it doesn't really mean much because we use OLED and stuff now as well anyway. Mm. There's no detail on when it might be a product, but it's promising. Especially since they're experimenting with rollable screens. All right. Cool. Sure. Go on, you go to the loo and I'll sit here and carry on. Thank you. <laughs> it's great that we're gonna turn this into a podcast and I'm talking about Chloe again for a wee. Sorry. Professional. Professional. <laughs> Alright, so I'll move on. Alright, so for those that don't know, the karaoke game Twitch Sings is going to shut down at the end of the year. Um, you still, <laughs> yeah, you've still got time to ball out a song before it's gone for good. Um, I've already seen a little bit of this. They're going to, any streamer that's got it tagged as Twitch Sings, they're going to like get rid of all your VODs for it as well. It's, it seems like a licensing issue, and they just don't have like rights for the music anymore. So just all content to do with that is going to get scraped off the platform. If we go through the article, it says the streaming platform's live karaoke game is shutting down. The company announced. The company says it has decided to close down the game effective January first, twenty twenty one, in order to invest in broader tools and services that will help support and grow the entire music community on Twitch. Twitch Sings launched in April 2019 and lets streamers choose a song from its library to perform. Singers could belt one out solo or get friends to join for a duet. The channel doesn't seem to have attracted a huge audience, however, while Twitch's overall music category has now more than 3 million followers. Twitch Sings only accounts for 161,000 of them. Alright. Okay, so they're basically saying, like, this isn't representative of the music industry on Twitch. So we shouldn't be just paying all this money for the rights for the single game. The Amazon on streaming platform says it's releasing the entire backlog of 400 new songs so fans can step up their mic for one last one song before things close down for good. Twitch, yeah, there we go. Twitch things will remove... Um, Twitch Sings will begin removing videos and clips as of December 1st. And by January 1st, remaining on-demand videos, including any past broadcasts, clips, or highlights, will all be removed as well. To archive your past Twitch Sings broadcast, check out the instructions in Twitch's videos on-demand section. Yeah, okay. If you have clips on your channel, you can get more information and manage them here. Okay. Basically, that's probably going to say, download them. <laughs> if, you, if you use Twitch Sings and you have any clips... They need taking off, basically now.
<laughs> Fitbit have got a new Fitbit, they've got a new watch coming out apparently and it claims that it can reduce your stress and it can track how stressed you are which sounds pretty crazy Fitbit's new smartwatch has a stress tracking sensor on board but what does that actually mean and will the world fall into bits is there any point I really, what does that even mean? Uh, Fitbit announced its new 299 cents health mark watch this week, complete with ECG heart monitoring, skin temperature sensing, and most headline worthy, a stress tracking electro moderate activity sensor, okay, EDA, in which you can pre order for September 21st. Tracking stress isn't quite straightforward as tracking steps, oh. though. There are a number of obstacles in measuring, analyzing, and presenting the relevant data, which goes somewhere to explain the relatively modest set of features sense owners are likely to encounter when placed in the palm of the device to take readings and sort them. Galvanic skin response, so called electrodermal activity, is a biomarker of sympathetic nervous system activation, considered one of the most sensitive and valid markers for emotional arousal. Okay, I really don't understand. She says, when you're doing high levels of emotional arousal, such as a stressful state, sweat secretion is intens intensely activated, which can be measured using a GSR sensor accurately and easily on the hands and feet. Problem in collection of sensor data stage. The use of wearable biosensors in real world presents several challenges in terms of reliable measurements. Yeah, I imagine everyone sweats at a different rate or... Well, yeah, probably. Unfortunately, happy stress response, like, I just got engaged. Yeah. And the really negative stress response is like, I'm watching a really terrifying movie. You can actually generate similar psychology reactions. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? Both HVR and skin temperature can be sensitive in Stages of stress, skin temperature de decreases in simple stress, e uh, stress events from an average of 32 to 35. Okay. It's feasible to distinguish relatively reliably a negative from a positive response. Maybe, if you get enough reading readings from the other senses as well. That would just be like an algorithm though at that point. Mm, yeah. To try and make it a bit more accurate than it otherwise would be. Probably. Anything you wanted to add this for specifically? No, I, just thought, I just thought it was interesting, that was all. Cool. I'm like, if they can actually do this, it'd be very interesting, but obviously, I don't know. Was my logic there, so I added it. Cool. It's interesting. I'd... I mean, why are we talking about this? This is like a, this is funny, but. I mean, I added it because I was like, wait, what? One plus one from flagship killer to flagship maker. Well, yeah, this is why I didn't buy one. Uh, I had a one plus what, seven, right? I had a one plus five, then I got a one plus seven. Seven, seven. Yeah. No, was it? It was the fives that I had last, right? Maybe. I didn't get the seven because I it was too much money. Maybe I don't. I don't know what you had. I don't want plus five. I don't know what you had. You had a phone. That's all I know. When it started life in twenty thirteen, one plus had a clear strategy in mind with its logic kill em, like mentality, never settle slogan. It was clear the Chinese company was looking to shake up the market with affordable devices delivered top in specs to rival its big name competitors. The company's first smartphone, the OnePlus One, cost just two thirty at the time. Flagship devices were upwards of five hundred. 
The strategy continues to work the one plus two, selling for 250. And the one plus X being at 200. It appeared to pay off for the company by offering the flagship level specs at aggressive prices. They gained a loyal and vocal following. Yep, yeah, which is, yeah, very true. I was one of those people. Mm. However, the strategy has become muddied with prices increasing some 75% higher than they were in previous years. It does say a OnePlus 5 series in 2017, so yeah, you must have... You, yeah. you were looking at getting the OnePlus 7. Yeah, I think I Same was, Same time yeah. you were looking at getting your phone. The OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro is the most expensive handsets yet. Later started at 800 and 900. That's just more, insane. This is there more than £100 yeah. more expensive than Apple's top-end iPhone XR. Yeah, why is someone going to do that? I don't know. Like, admittedly, the OnePlus 8 Pro is a better device than the XR. Mm -hmm. The XR is cheap, but to a certain degree, if I don't, even if I don't like it, you have to accept that Apple has some credibility in brand name. Yeah, it does. Right? You need to be lower. Hey, Sparkle. Hi. You need to charge less than Apple. Uh, minimum because their okay. price is higher than it should be anyway yeah just on the basis of it's called app it's made by apple it's already got an apple tag it's on OnePlus 5 series in 2017 and it has seemingly paid off for the company in some markets okay it's on search apple and samsung to become leading premium phone maker in india and it ranks top five yeah. in the uk us and china flagship holiday interesting the thing is like the charts like that will lag, if, if you understand what that means. If you think of it as less as like a year-on-year -year chart, it'll be mm. more like a histogram. If mm. you've been cheap for 10 years, yeah. even if you're expensive this year, you're going to be on that top list. Yeah. Whereas like in five years' time, you might not be. Mm. If you keep charging the expensive prices, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it does say it, it doesn't focus on cheap devices like Xiaomi or Samsung, which is what you have. Yeah, and I've, I know friends that have had a OnePlus phone and they've all gone to Xiaomi or OnePlus Huawei company. or whatever. Recently re this... released a four-part documentary about itself. A company released a docu- If you're releasing a documentary about yourself, you're up your own ass. <laughs> I was about to say, Sorry. why would you want to release a, a documentary about yourself? It just yeah, doesn't make any sense crazy. whatsoever. They're releasing a cut of it on Amazon Prime. I said that. I saw it. And I was oh like, my oh my god! A cut of yeah, I believe it's an upstart eQuest image and a community-driven attitude which was the driver of its early access. It's crazy. Like <laughs> I just say here though, like um, the rapid fan base that has taken to the OnePlus and its sub four hundred smartphones. You're going too fast now. I don't know what you're reading. Oh, okay. We're no longer being catered <laughs> to by the company <laughs> as OnePlus moved to take on its rivals head to head. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. It says the sales continued to drop after the release of OnePlus 6. The former OnePlus employee says, so the release of the OnePlus 7, the company rejiggered its strategy once again with a Samsung problem I've got with this is that we already we know for a fact as a consumer, right? Yeah. We're saying like it used to cost two fifty mm -hmm. for the cutting edge, the late Snapdragon, yeah. an OLED screen, oh, no. good battery. I could get something for two fifty, two hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Now you're charging six, seven hundred. What's the point? We know you're ripping us off. Yeah. But where Samsung well... is a brand name, it's a big name where people would be happy to pay extra, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There's a lot of people who are like, I'll pay for Samsung because I know how it is laid out. I know what I'm going to expect. Yeah, I know. Or I'll get an iPhone because I want Me. something simple. I want something I can't mess up. Me. Like, all the, yeah, there's a lot of... <laughs> Me. Or I just, everything else I've got is Apple, so I'm just going to buy Apple. Me. Also me. Yeah, right? There's a lot of... <laughs> Really bad arguments for buying them, oh, no. but there are arguments for buying yeah. Samsung and Apple at a premium to something mm. else. 
Whereas there's not an argument to buy this something else for the same price as I like I, an iPhone. Although the <laughs> OnePlus 7 series Even if was the picked up by numerous worse. operators in the UK, this change in tack did not did didn't pay off the, for the company. Although it was saved by the fact that Apple and Samsung smartphones had started to go over the thousand mark, OnePlus yeah. phones are no longer off the thousand mark themselves. Like. The firm latest one plus eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's ridiculous though, because like nowadays phones are expensive. Like you can't say they're not because they are expensive. It very much depends though. It does because... depend. I know it depends on what brand you get and stuff. But no, it depends what phone we're talking about, right? iPhone. The I iPhones are expensive. IPhone. Because of the Apple tax. I know. Yeah, I know. That's literally it. Yeah, like, it is. They know people want an iPhone and they're cashing in on it now before they go on cool, yeah. which we've already talked about in previous episodes, Pre- yes. right? Sure. We know that... What's a OnePlus Nord? It's the new one coming out this year. Oh, okay. Could you just say you like a smartphone that ha- harks back to companies early years when it's... Ludicrously cheap, three hundred and seventy nine price tag. Well, yeah, they're gonna have to go back to being cheap. Well, yeah, there's no choice anywhere, I guess. The Xiaomi existing means they have to compete with Xiaomi, not Samsung. Mm, Yeah. They just don't have the clout that Samsung do. That is probably true. However, the Nord's arrival is badly timed. Not only is a smartphone market facing its toughest year yet as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. But the device also lands at a time where mid-tier market has never been yep. more competitive with the likes of... Oppo, Xiaomi, Realme, and even Battle, battle out with Apple now. That OnePlus created in 20... Like, yep. like it doesn't surprise they, they me. They fuck it up. <laughs> like, Everyone else saw, wait, what are you doing? Right, you you well, own yeah. this market and you've just kind of left it. So yeah, exactly. I guess I guess we'll have all your customers. Thank you. <laughs> Almost like there's a lot more people who buys a phone for three hundred pound than there's people that buys two one and a half thousand pound phones. No, no. I like how it's, it's crazy, like, right? It's, I know. it's crazy. Well, I like could <laughs> never know how well the OnePlus Nord actually sells, nor whether it can help OnePlus to boost its lowly share of the market surely it'll no doubt do well in one plus key market of india where it's almost 170 pound cheaper in the uk but if it's looking to recapture the western market it might be too yeah too little too late interesting even that, even you know, samsung what? if you start comparing like mid-range like you can buy a samsung for 300 quid yeah it's like the a line right it's hmm? just not the s series yeah Hell, my dad has one. Yeah, he dad got that. It cost about the same as my your phone. My phone, and that's an edge-to-edge screen mm-hmm. with a pinhole camera. Yeah. Which is every. It's got everything in which you'd want out of a phone. Yeah. It's got all the software that you'd expect to see on your phone because he's he's used to Samsung. Oh well, yeah. It doesn't really matter if the CPU's eighty percent the fastest the One Plus or. No, it doesn't. 50% as fast, like, yeah. most people don't understand what that is, they, no. they don't, I won't add that a lot of people don't know, like, Snapdragon 835, 765, <laughs> you, know, you, well, you don't know what any of these numbers mean, or, like, on gonna, paper, how fast any of them are, okay. yeah. a lot of people don't understand, that. like, an iPhone X is, like, when I compare, no, my friend's iPhone. Yeah. If we run 3D Mark next to each other, yeah. I get like double yeah. what, what his does oh, yeah, on yeah. a graphics and compute benchmark. Sure. His okay. iPhone X is half of what my Xiaomi cheap phone does. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. People don't understand what how any of this works. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In terms of like, com- like components... It's the whole package that you're getting. Hmm? Whether your physical hardware is worse or better. Is another statement. It doesn't... It matters to a techie like me. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> Who wants like the latest Snapdragon, overclocked, and all this other, all this stuff? Sure. With a really big battery, so I can keep that going for a while. Yeah. But for you, who's like less of a techie in terms of phones and stuff? Mm. Hi iPhone. <laughs> iPhone five over here. iPhone seven. Uh, iPhone 7, seven. Sorry. A five is so old. It wouldn't even run what I want it to run anymore. To be fair, an iPhone seven is also so old. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, but they've got the iPhone twelve coming out. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> even though you won't buy me an iPhone, you're like, oh, I'm the iPhone. Oh, it's not worth the money. Oh, so I'm again. I'm not anti iPhone. I just don't think they're worth what. Yeah, not they worth cost. the money. Yeah. I don't think the phone's bad. I just no. think it should be about 600 quid. Probably should be. To not, be fair, not 1,200. To be fair, they are like, they're not bad second hand. Like this was second hand when I brought it. Yeah. Like, it was it was new second hand because somebody just went and brought one and then like all the iPhone, next iPhone gen came out so they brought the next iPhone gen. As I was like, yeah, whatever. Yay. Oh, my little monkey. Monkey. Right, shall we move on from phones? She's moved. Yeah. Shall we move on from phones? Sure. Looking at my cat. Looking at my cat. Right, you added this one again. <laughs> the surprise secret hidden in a pregnancy test. What's surprisingly secret hidden in a pregnancy test? Oh, no. That's All cool. right. Two days ago, a teardown of a digital pregnancy test has created a buzz online. As it revealed that it was just a standard paper test inside, similar to those used their GP's office. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that you pee on and it has the lines on, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. The experiment raised questions whether the extra cost of the digital test is actually justified. Some say the electronics give women a clear answer, but others point to the e-waste created by digital test kits. The only thing I don't understand. Yeah, but... it's just like the exact same digital thing. Digital tests. Some of them could tell you how far along you are. How do they do that though? If that's all this is. Well, that's, is it what, just a I, that's guess? what I mean. That's what I don't. I yeah, don't it's understand. Just, it's just like a strip, like you'd usually get unless on the cheap ones. Unless they're two different tests, ones and actual. With a couple of light sensors to see if there's a I line that formed or not, and obviously the chip just says pregnant or not pregnant, depending what yeah, lines like, you form. Can, you can get like. That seems ones. so over engineered. Yeah, but then you can get ones that tell you how long you are. How do they do that then? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, because they just obviously that says pregnant. Yeah, I know. But some of them have like one. Some of them say like one to two weeks or yeah. two to however many months you are or etc. etc. And I'm like, I wonder if it's just like how strong well, that yeah, line. Wait, this here. Look, um, well, this one here for experiment. I'm gonna use a Walmart digital pregnancy test. Okay. The inner workings are clearly small to include in, yeah, because that's what I'm thinking of the clear blue one. Yeah. And Boots own brand digital pregnancy test, okay. Was finding elements so as basic paper test. Paper test strips detect a hormone called human chronicle, whatever that is. Big big word that I can't say. Yeah, they just they <laughs> they've got a line just, on them which change colour. Okay. Yeah, I think we we, we can all yeah, but then, like, I don't that. understand because, like, obviously, to say, like, the electronics simply read the results and paper test and digit pregnant or not pregnant, okay? Yep. The circuit board featured a surprisingly complicated chip, more powerful than the CPU okay. used by the original IBM PC. Concluded that the digital tests were probably not worth the money, though, as a strip cost less than 20 cents. It's yeah, basically digital, a scam. Digital tests are Twitter. so expensive. Computers are cheap now. People are buying the digital one thinking it's a more accurate, fancier model. Yeah, they are. But it's the exact same thing with a bunch of lights and sensors. Oh, yeah. However, paper tests could be misread and judged. The results of tests were subjective. Okay. It's not wasteful to provide less privileged women with effective, easy-to-use tools to fully exercise their reproductive rights. If there's e-waste... What does less privileged mean? I don't know. Less privileged woman. What? Unable to know the difference between one line and two? Probably. One line and two. <laughs> I don't understand. I still don't understand how I understand like, how the less privileged women thing. I like, don't know. Keep just, these... Let's just <laughs> have a look. Surely you'd have to be more privileged to be paying for the more expensive well, test? Probably, yeah. I don't right? know. Am I, yeah, I just... Am I off base? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're arguing <laughs> that women shouldn't be using the thing that costs 15 cents and use the one that costs like 10 pounds because yes. there should be something for people less privileged. <laughs> I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Oh, wait, In my wait, mind. wait, wait, wait. I like how someone said, like, someone of uh, SSM I'm processor struggling. of bio nanotech agree that the interpreting the lines of paper test could vary from person to person. I can see a faint line. Another person doesn't see anything, he said. That's great. I mean... <laughs> I don't understand. I mean... I don't understand. This is such a rant thread, lots of reasons, but I'm quite <laughs> boggled by the thought that we now have processors and code running on a device when you pee on and throw it away, which creates kind of profligate with the materials that go in a CPU. Taking pregnancy yeah, tests got, like, apart. gold and stuff and like a... Uh, very frequent. Pl platinum and stuff that's going in the bin. Weird. Bizarre. Also contained within the test is a moisture absorbent tablet to keep the circuit dry before it's used. Yep. Ugh. Yeah, it's been incredibly suggested on social media that this is a country pill hidden inside. That's what people think it is. Yeah, I remember that. Not. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, one video just <laughs> video has 4.5 million views on Twitter. Yeah. It's toxic All right, and so should not be eaten. I don't anymore. really know what else to say about that other than like... What? If it's literally just a paper test, like, you just issue someone with a piece of paper saying, if it looks like this picture, you're not pregnant. If, you are, if it looks like this picture, you are. Pretty sure it do you have like a leaflet with them that says that, right? Yes, it does. The cheat ones. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really think this is necessary, like, at all. No, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Especially not with like throwing away like platinum Rubbish. and gold and copper and all this stuff that like goes into making a processor Rangers. and a circuit. Yeah. This is like. That's so weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this is, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like precious earth metal, and we're just buying it to have a piss on and bin. Pee on? <laughs> like, it's like, no, no. We buy it to pee on, and it can tell me whether I'm. Like, I always assumed there was just way more accurate. What, the digital ones? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think. I assumed it was that doing something not. that. a paper, More advanced than a paper strip, at least. Oh. Anyway. Well, yeah, I don't know. Alright. It boggles the mind, guys. We've just. We're, um, Is that the same link? Yeah. Oh. You've sorry. just clicked on that one. That was that's the one <laughs> we've just done. You need to get rid of some of these. There's so much. This is like a month now. old, but like you you've added it anyway. Yeah, I did. So what we're we saying here? Radium five thousand will bring big improvement to Mac. This hmm. is funny in there. The context that we are now have. The. 3000 series out yeah, <laughs> with NVIDIA. This is probably absolutely garbage compared. Well, yeah, I know. Hey, because that memory I, speed 14. I thought, that's, Apple that's were doing their own, I thought Apple were bandwidth. now doing their own ones. I didn't think they were doing like. Um, was I okay. I don't think they're going to do their own graphics that I've seen. Okay. They'll be doing their own processes, right? Okay. Sure. And I think they're originally doing them in the MacBooks. Okay. So they're getting rid of Intel. Yeah. And you can do a fairly basic iGPU for a MacBook because okay. they don't actually have a graphics card in them. Okay. Sure. So they can just bake that into the chip that they make for a processor. Okay. Like an integrated graphics chip. Apple offers four AMD Radon Pro 500 series GPU options for the 27 inch Mac. Yep. Okay, so it's like 20 to 40. So 5700 XT and a 5500 XT is obviously the same as the consumer GPU ones, right? Okay. Sure. So a 5700 XT now is a bit of a joke. Okay. Because, like, I, I've not actually checked the price in a while, but let's have a look. Let's go 5700. Bear in mind that the 3080, uh, the 3070 is going to be around four five hundred dollar mark. That's a lot. That's like nearly four hundred pounds. Uh, four five hundred for, for for an extra hundred pounds, you're going to get something better than a 2080 Ti. Okay. 
Sure. And this is by no way anywhere near that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so this is like, this needs to half at this point. Yeah. Or significantly come down. Okay. For, uh, for this to not be a joke. See, this is like, you're going to get some aftermarket NVIDIA cards around four or five hundred pounds for the 3070. Okay. At least January, February next year. Hmm? As as the supply instantly goes and slowly comes back, as is going to be expected with the 30 series launch. This is this is. I almost want to um, screenshot this page and just save it and look look at it in about three months. Can we go back onto the thing? Yeah, I'm just saying that like these. They're gonna are yeah, all, okay. like the best one on here is like that one. Worse than the lowest end Nvidia card. Okay. For this sure. gen. Well, I was only wondering what it was. That was all. The the reason this happens. Mm -hmm. It's because Mac and Nvidia don't work together. Is that what it is? They're both companies which are very up their own arse, to put mm -hmm. it politely. Okay. They're very aggressive in how they market and how they do business, right? Very aggressive, okay. Sure. Well, you know what Apple's <laughs> like. They're the most evil company on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. Like, mm -hmm. there's been studies and they've taking, taking half my money. <laughs> they've concluded that they're the most evil company on the planet in how they make pro products, mm -hmm. how they market them, how they sell them. I just that's just a fact. How of interest. Nvidia is relative. It's not evil in that sense, mm -hmm. but like they're very similar in the way they do business. Sure. Out of interest, if I went to the shop and I used my Apple Pay, um, yeah. would Apple take half of the money? I don't think so. Okay, so if I, so obviously I brought my lad on Disney Disney Plus on my Apple. Yeah. Will that take half the money? I think there's a good chance it takes thirty percent. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Because so the thirty percent. Thirty percent of twenty pounds. What? The thirty percent is yeah. for any developers that have in-app purchases through the App Store. Okay. So it has to be a, a app in the store. Hmm. So and a payment a through it. Okay. Okay. If it does, it will. But if it's Apple Pay, that's a different service Apple offers. Okay. That's just a direct payment gateway. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I was trying to because when I bought my line yesterday, obviously I used my Apple. Yeah. My my like Apple thing. But that's obviously in app purchases. I think. Like Apple Pay is an an, an app made by another developer. Apple Pay is Apple. Okay. So there is no other developer to. Paying oh. the 30%. Okay. Oh. And a shopkeeper is obviously not going to be okay with accepting Apple Pay if they need 30%. Like Tesco isn't going to accept that. <laughs> or like Walmart or That's whatever it. you call it is not going to be all right with saying, oh yeah, well, you can have 30% off your shopping if you use Apple Pay. Mm. Like, pay it to Apple. That's not going to happen. Um, That's it, really. It just says that this is how much it, this is like it. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was interesting. How much are they charging for the fifty-seven hundred? Um, five hundred dollars. Yep, yeah, no, that's just plus five hundred dollars. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how much that's going to cost. It's probably five hundred dollars. All right. right now. You Apple people, you 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 pay that. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Okay. The next. That's thing. not worth five hundred dollars. Tom's hardware. Hey, Tom's hardware. Some side was always good. I like that website. Babe, you need to get rid of some of these tags. So many tags. It's really like so much on there. I'm like, Bleh. I think I need some water. I'm getting a migraine from having that coffee. Do you want to disable ad block? No. AMD's Ryzen embedded powers blue job tub mini PC. Wait, what the hell are we talking about? This cube P shaped PC will come to Ryzen option. That's what we're talking about. Is that like a mirror effect? Yeah, looks oh, like that's it. pretty cool. It says it, babe, you're, can you stop moving so fast? You're hurting my eyes. It's you. not moved. I moved down you like were, you slightly. You were, you moved it very quickly. Like Sorry, babe. Well, I'm getting a migraine because I've had coffee. And you gave me coffee this morning without any, with caffeine in, which now gives me a migraine, so. 
prepare for moody girlfriend syndrome. The French PC manufacturing company announced two CPU options for their small cube-shaped PC known as the Cub Graphite Edition. Yeah. According to a report by Tech Radar, it will offer an Intel and Ryzen option for the CPU. Uh, this isn't very exciting because, I mean, I mean the computer looks cool. Mm -hmm. The fact that it will come with an AMD processor though now is like... Hopefully it does. Like I think AMD have made themselves relevant enough to be considered in these things now. Sure. Did they actually typo it in the... This can, this PC looks awesome though, right? Mm. Sure. Oh, I've done Tech Radar. Oh, what? Guys, I'm just trying to show something quickly. <laughs> Quartz, chocolate, or champagne coloured. Yeah, they're, they're the Jeez. images of that. Oh, is there, is there more than one? Yes. Quartz, chocolate, oh, or champagne. Oh, I thought it was like a mirror. That's not, that's like graphite. Yeah, they've red. got three different colours. Oh, the mirror one's cool. Yeah. You don't even know that's like a PC, would you? No. Oh, gold. I want gold. I've decided. Oh, so it like it sucks in through the back and extracts through the back. But yeah, sucks it. Depending what you put Pink. in there, that's like. I want blue. Why have they not got a blue one? I'm offended. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I just thought oh. it was quite interesting because, <laughs> like, you know. I'd definitely like one, but like, I definitely wouldn't pay mini PC prices because I have the room for to have a bigger PC. And you're on the wrong link. Trust me out, do it all the time. We didn't, even, we didn't even look at it. We just went like that. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the news is that it's got Ryzen options, right? I assume so, yeah. Yeah, and it shows you how much it will cost. Yeah. Which is 679 euros. That's cool. A lot of money. So, I think we'll go on to now the big hitting article of the day, which obviously we have to talk about it. NVIDIA has now revealed, stop playing video, that they've got the 3090, 3080 and 3070 GPU coming out soon. It should be, is it the 17th of this month? Uh, oh, 17th of September, yeah. The price release date and specs have all been detailed now for us all. And as you've um, probably seen if you've been on any social network, the amount of memes <laughs> built around everything going on is insane. Mm -hmm. So you probably all know that it's pretty good what's come out. Uh, NVIDIA has finally released its new line of graphics, which include the Ampere architecture. The RTX 3090, 80 and 70 will all be coming out in the September. 3080 is going to be seven hundred dollars. 3070 is going to be five hundred dollars. Yeah, but it's just also. 3090 is going to be what one thousand five hundred. Mhm. Mm what is Pre-order is not yet available, but Nvidia That's does fine. have a notify me button if you're ready to place an order. <laughs> I imagine. I imagine they're already sold out from those notify me's. Pops. <laughs> Traditionally, a new line of graphics sells out quickly when they first go and pre-order. Yeah. Well, basically what it is, is there's obviously the pro TSMC can produce X number a day, right? Okay. So like for two months before they launch, mm -hmm. they'll, NVIDIA will go like, right, start making graphics cards for us to sell. Mm -hmm. They'll have like this huge backlog of ones to sell, mm -hmm. X thousand of them. Yeah. And then everyone will buy those. Yeah. They'll instantly go out of stock. And obviously you just have to buy one as TSMC is making them every month from that sure. point. Sure. I'd highly recommend you don't buy one at an upmarketed price because you're going to get a lot of people buy a lot of these and try and sell them for more on eBay. Yeah, I probably will, yeah. Just wait two months. Always happens when they all go out of stock and everyone who wants one gets one. Yeah. And then they just the price just skills back down to what it should be. Sure. Because <laughs> they're, they're still making them. Even if they're out of stock, oh. TSMC is still printing the wafers and turning them into chips, right? And turning them into graphics cards. Sure. You just have to wait for them to make one for you. Mm -hmm. 
Can you imagine gaming in 8K? That's just crazy. I already read that. Like, it's down the bottom. What there we go. As far as textbooks go, you can check out the table below. Not too far as that. So we've got the 39. He's got over 10,000 cores now. 3080 with 8,700. 3070 with 8,500. Uh, 5,800. Now, how many did the 2080 Ti have? 20 Ti stack. Data sheet or something, I don't know what. Does it show you how many they have? Oh, we <laughs> have 6,000 at the moment. Yeah, sure. There we go. So, Turing architecture, it had. Doesn't say how many cores it has. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so the 2080 Ti has 4,352. And compare, compare that against the new architecture of this. It's also going to be a node shrink, because it's 7 nanometer, not 12. So architecturally, it'd be more efficient. Just in terms of uh, manufacturing process, it'd be more efficient. And there's over double in the 3090. This is around about double. This is like around about two times the 2080 Ti. And this is a significant margin over what a 2080 Ti would be for $500. I don't think this is going to be equivalent to a 2080 Ti. Like, look at it. It's a good, a good thousand cores higher than what the 2080 Ti was. Mm -hmm. This is going to be brutal for anyone who's bought the um, 2000 series. <laughs> but every YouTuber said it. We all said it. We said, this is crazy. They're just charging a huge premium for this generation. And they could have halved the price and made a profit. Yeah. Everyone said it. And, ev and then they've done it now. Pretty much the entire market continued to buy the 2080 Ti yeah. and the 2080 for some reason. Yeah. All got duped out of the money and because the new consoles are coming out, Nvidia have had to correct the pricing mm. to where it should have been the whole time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the 2080 Ti should never have been $1200. <laughs> it didn't make no sense. Mm. But, yeah. I, I mean, we all tried to warn you, so I'm, I'm really sorry if you lost all your money with the 2000 series. Your card is now a $400 card. <laughs> if you have a 2080 Ti. And it's just the new normal. Okay. Compared to the Turing, the 2080, the Ampere-based 3080 will be built with 30 shaders. 283 10 circles, plenty of other details given at the retail reveal video. Sure. We also got a sneak peek of what performance the Ampere RTX card will compare to the current gen, and the gains are shown to be significant. Yeah, it will be. Look how many cores they have compared. Oops. The folks over at Digital Foundry did a hands on preview, testing relative performance, and came away with around 70 to 90% performance increases depending on the game. Uh, more budget friendly 3070 is even said to slightly outperform the 2080 Ti and about half the price too. The Beast of the R RTX 3090 is said to be 50% faster than the enthusiast tier Titan. Whew. The graph below compares Turing and Ampere across a number of games. Alright, can I open that in any tab? Okay, so we've got second generation RT core, dedicated hardware. Okay, so we've got okay. what we're comparing here, just core for core. Probably. This is what it'd be on Turing versus Ampere. Mm -hmm. So, are we saying that it's almost double as efficient That's in a lot of like cases? Saying, yeah. Like, blenders, like 200% more efficient on a Ampere core versus Turing? Well, if you look. That's what we're saying here. There's, there's, yeah. 
Well, i9 CPU, games and apps run at 4K. It kind of shows you what things run 4K, actually. Or is this a different amount of cores? I don't know, is it? I don't know. It's not explicitly know. clear here. No, I don't know. I mean, it says relative performance of 0 to 2. So yeah. I assume, I assume this is trying to say. That's Turing. That's it's either. Basically. It's either like 150 to 200 percent more efficient depending on workload. Yeah. Per core, sure. I think is what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think the benchmarks that are going to come out of this launch are going to be insane. Props. I think <laughs> we're going to have like. Do you know when you watch like Gamers Nexus, right? Oh. You might not know what that is. Nope. Oh, it's a YouTube channel. He does really good like benchmarking. Okay. There's going to be like a new tier above what we have now. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> it's going to be like a whole new ball game. Mm. I'll pick one new cool Especially in price fans. performance. It's a fan, Booba. It's a it is a fan, yeah. I'm amazed that they've got away with one fan on a lot of these. Mm. The new RTX 30 series cards have been built with a new cooling system and fans on both sides of the board pushing air in both directions independently to be better with the temperature. It claims that these new cards will run cooler and quieter than the 20 series counterparts. Sure. I highly suspect that these will really overclock. Sure. Because I'm looking at the you know the wattage mm. so like 300 200 mm. and that's for how many cores you've got like i imagine the frequency is not very high there okay does it say what frequency they're using because we know for no. a fact basically every every nvidia card that i've had mm. for the longest time have all gone over two gigahertz okay These in, in overclocking like, and like... that's comfortably without doing anything crazy sure like I've I've had my 1080 to 2.1, mm. and that's with the stock cooler, just fans, all that jazz. Sure. It's nothing complicated, um, and it's run fine. Yeah. Okay. So 1.7 seems very low to me. Mm. That seems like they've limited it because they can to keep it at a certain wattage. Maybe. So I very much. Obviously, we know a lot of people will okay. not care about how much power it uses and drive that to six hundred watts to see what they could do. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what AMD can do, honestly, because they was. I mean, everyone said it. They said, like, AMD on 7 nanometer mm. was at the same efficiency as uh, in, in, in NVIDIA mm -hmm. at 12 nanometer. Mm -hmm. So we all knew, like, okay, you're as efficient, but what if NVIDIA goes to 7 nanometers? And everyone kind of just said, well, it isn't worth it for them to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, here we are. Uh, this is going to be way more efficient than what... AMD has, mm -hmm. sure. and all the leaks coming out have kind of put the new Navi stuff on par with, you know, a twenty eighty Ti. I've not seen any leaks to say to suggest that it's going to be like a hundred and forty or one hundred and fifty percent more cores than a twenty eighty Ti, which is what this this is Same. over two times. Yeah. Like, if we're talking about something which is below, like, this many, not CUDA cores, that's an NVIDIA thing, but um, shaders. Sure. This is essentially what that is, right? Okay. If we're, if we're talking about something with the same amount of shaders as a 2080 Ti. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. What are they going to price it at? Because obviously that's five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's got game streaming, which we use. It's got AI and deep learning stuff baked in. Yeah. It's got ray tracing baked in. Sure. For better or for worse, or whatever you think about it, it's got it. 
which we don't really know how the new one's going to be implemented that AMD's doing. Mm -hmm. It's got game capture, it's got high resolution game capture, you can capture a game up to 8K even yeah. if you're running it in 1080p. Mm. That's what you can do, you can like record a clip in a really high resolution. Yeah. And, and uh, I'll take a screenshot for a desktop background in a stupidly high resolution. Or you can do all the image sharpening features and stuff that it's got. Yeah. That are w arguably better because it's got like AI power in it rather than just a filter. Yeah. There's so much that you get on an NVIDIA card. If you want to use Plex, right, you can output way more streams on an NVIDIA card because of the baked in H.264 and H.265 encoder, which, again, AMD doesn't have. It's like, it's, it's comparing apples and oranges that can both, <laughs> you can eat both of them, right? But, like, they're not the same thing. It's a raisin, mate. You won't want it. <laughs> Honestly, you won't. Uh, okay. What's next on our list of articles? Um, Apple delays the new anti-tracking privacy measures. Okay. So Apple has delayed the implementation of new privacy measures designed to stop apps and websites tracking people online without their consent. This change also means that people will have to ask user permission to access the Apple, the ads tracking ID on the iPhone or iPad. Okay. Measures were due to arrive in the latest iOS 14 update. Also, the changes were being delayed until the start of 2021 to give app developers more time to adapt to their services. Facebook has warned that Apple's privacy plan could make one of its advertising tools so ineffective on iOS that it may not make sense to offer it. Sure. The social network says it will no longer collect users Ad tracking IDs on iOS 14, okay. and that Apple's plan ha had forced it to make that decision. So, what's Apple changing? Apple devices, including the iPhone, iPad, Apple TV box, have a unique ID known as the identifier for advertisers. Okay. It can help apps monitor the effect effectiveness of an advertising campaign. For example, it can determine whether somebody downloaded an app after seeing an ad. Is that why there's so many ads? Well, obviously, well, if you download, download the, the app, game. they need to know so they can pay. The, like, Google can charge, right? Sure. <laughs> What's the cat doing? Um, I don't know, to be honest. However, once the change is implemented in 21, it will be off by default, and advertisers will have to ask people to access it. Yeah, ask them to access it. And I will say no, <laughs> if, if you ask. As will everyone, I imagine. Probs. Apps will have to ask to access permission to track people, to track what people do in apps and on websites owned by other companies. Additionally, when iOS 14 is released in autumn, apps will have to declare what data can be collected. Yeah, now they're tracking. All right, so what else is changing? One of the biggest changes to iOS 14 will be the shakeup of the home screen. Apple is updating widgets, new app called Translate, which goes at language translations offline, okay. alternative to Google okay. Translate. It will support all own languages to begin with, English, Mandarin, German, Arabic. For the first time, use the world to set up third-party email and web browser. Okay, fine. Right? <laughs> Who is? Who is, like, that, that was supposed to be in iOS 14, but it's not going to be. That's next year now. Again, I don't know how... I don't know what they expect app developers to do, like Facebook, like, saying... Oh, there's, we'll give you a few months to sort out how to not track people. I know your entire business model is built around being able to do it and everything. <laughs> so uh, what are they supposed to do? You've kind of just put them in a... Uh, either they find a way around your, your new OS. Yeah. And still manage to track people with, with either. I mean, I assume you'd know about it, but like with you like being able to say that you're doing everything you can mm -hmm. or they just stop doing it yeah. and but their business kind of relies on doing it so 
I don't know what you expect them to do. What have we got left here? All right, so what else have we got in the news today? I mean, Epic Games has renewed its legal request to bring Fortnite back to the App Store. Mm-hmm. They're still trying to get Apple to reinstate its app. Sure. Like Friday, the gaming company filed a motion for the preliminary injunction against Apple blocking Fortnite and iPhones and iPads. The injunction briefly says that more than 116 million games have played it on iOS, making the game's biggest platform. Large than its player based on Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, or Android. Oh, that's a far, isn't it? Filed in the US District Court, all Epic seeks is for the court to stop Apple from retaliating against Epic for daring to challenge Apple's misconduct. Okay. In a Saturday statement, Epic said, Today we asked the court to stop Apple from retaliating against Epic for daring to challenge Apple's misconduct while our antitrust case is proceeding. Okay. In Apple, in claiming that Apple monopolizes the distribution and purchase of iOS apps, Epic Games is going to have to convince the judge that those are markets to begin with. On Saturday, the court recommended that Epic comply with the App Apple. Store guidelines while their case moves forward. Guidelines says they've followed for the past Epic decade until they've created the situation. Epic has refused. Well, then. We hope that we can work together again in future, but unfortunately that is not possible today. So almost within its hearings is scheduled for like September twenty eighth. A judge ruled. I mean, do you want to know what I'd do if I was Epic? What? I'd just remove all payments from the App Store. Oh well, yeah. I'd just be like, all right, we'll comply with it. Just take every way of paying out of that app. Oh yeah. And it in in place put like a a button that links to a website. Well, it says a a judge ruled on August twenty fourth that Apple must not block Epic's development platform on Rio Engine. Yeah. Which many developers rely on to create games on Apple devices. But that Fortnite would not be yeah. in state. Just it's simple, right? Just it say if temporary. you want to buy anything and just have a web store. Well, I was gonna say yeah. my brother my brother downloaded Fortnite, didn't he? Yeah. On the iPad. Just don't allow so people to pay through well, it until this is that's done. That's what you can do. Continue with your court case, Epic, and try and argue the the fact that you should be able to have that stuff in your app. But just strip it out of the app until you've finished, and like they won't be able, they well, can't say no. That's the thing. To it's, putting it's your app back there, if there's Apple's no way. Except fee and requirements that all an app store under Apple. Like that's what Apple. I'm saying. Just don't have any in-app pay- purchases through it until you're done. It's you're better having your players uh, I like playing. how someone said there. I think in brackets, Epic won the lawsuit will be pretty good for markets overall. Yeah. But like. Mm. Oh, I think they'll win. Maybe, I don't know. It's definitely a monopoly. You can just point it to any other... You can just point it to any other operating system. All right, Windows. Um, You can get... Anyone can code a piece of software for it. Anyone can install it. Linux. Anyone can code a Linux app and install it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Android. Obviously, there's the Play Store. But if you don't want to use that, you can put it on your website and download it and install it directly. IOS, App Store, mm. gatekept, and then they can force download, erase stuff remotely anyway from people who deem an app to no longer be worthy of their f- platform, right? Yeah. It almost needs breaking up. Like, Google own Android, but they don't limit Firefox, uh, Firefox, Amazon, Amazon Fire, but they have their own app store, right? Sure. And everyone has their own app stores for like TV launches, smart TVs. They all run Android, but Samsung has their own interface and their own app store for the smart TVs that they do. Yeah. It's <laughs> It's not a hard argument to make that an operating system shouldn't be controlled so heavily by its owner. Yeah, sure. Like the fact that let's take it in Android land, right? You've got iCloud, haven't you? On iOS. You've got iCloud, email, calendar, you've got iCloud for files and you've got FaceTime. Mm. All these 
services Hi. that Apple will give you. Hi, message. Mail. Yeah. You've got all these services that Apple will give you, mm. which... Pages. Essentially, if you've got an iPhone, you almost have to use, right? I'm in a thing. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of don't really get a choice. Whereas on any other platform, I've got it. Google Drive, Gmail, mm -hmm. all the same stuff. I mean, I have, I have um, Gmail on here, yeah. I have Google on here, I have yeah. iStore, I mean, as in the Apple one is default on Iowa. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I can delete Gmail if I don't want it. You cannot I delete your mail. I can't delete my mail. <laughs> I need just, that. It's part of your account to log into the phone and it's forced all the other services on as default. Yeah. Just yeah. like I imagine you don't really need iCloud. Because we've got our own NAS here. Right. But on iOS, you can't set all your own can't IP address for sure. No. Like file storage area. Hmm? I. <laughs> I don't think it's a hard court case to win. Oh, probably not, but I don't know. Depending, depending what way they go down it. But yeah, like I, I definitely think they should just strip the game of all in-app purchases and just put it back on the App Store. Probably. Because what are Apple gonna do? Like, if you if at that point it it's genuinely just petty, and you could see they're just doing it to hurt the other company, and you can sue them for that. Yeah, in theory, you could sue them, yeah. If, if you go like, oh, look, there's no in-app purchases at all in our game. Can't. We just want to let our fans play Fortnite. And then Apple say no. You've got grounds to sue them further on the on that. And that's something simple you can do. Yeah, it is. And frankly, most people who have a iPhone also own a PC or a MacBook or something they can do a purchase on. Everything. You can just say, oh, purchases disabled on Android, uh, on iOS, mm. go to, like, go to, like, a such and such browser, go to fortnite.com or whatever it is, I don't buy know, I don't know what your website is, Probably and have a web game. store for them to buy everything that they would anyway, and at least you're still getting money out of that, like, in yeah. the meantime. Admittedly, it'll be less people than if it was in the app, but you're getting nothing now. It's not even on the store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it yeah. doesn't seem like that complicated a thing to just go like, all right, well, we'll just we'll just put it back on and say you have to use the our website yeah. to buy everything. Yeah. Am I being an idiot? Is that? No, you're not being an idiot. Is is that wrong? I don't no. know. Like Fort my. Like mobile dot fortnite dot something, right? And it'd just I mean, be like a, a list of all the things to buy on Android, yeah. uh, iOS. It's cross platform anyway, right? What Fortnite? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you if you're logging well, into yes, it. Yes, because we you played on your PC. You played on your phone before well, on your PC, and then I played on my on the Switch. Switch. But I don't know if you like your what's Fortnite currency V bucks or whatever. I don't know if like if you have them on your PC account, if you also have them on your mobile account. Probably, I don't really know. I don't know. I've never played it mobile. Don't know. Obviously, I played it on my mobile, but you know we have a way of playing games on from the PC. I've got to do my just sanitize my hands. I don't touch my eyeball. Yeah, that's what I'd do anyway. I think that. I think that'd like resolve this temporary problem well, and let them continue weird, with, but and I let them know. continue just doing the court case. Fine. Sure. I don't know why they're trying to get it reinstated with all the enough payments. Like obviously they're not going to accept that. No. That's what yeah. they're fighting you legally for. Yeah, they are. Just take yeah. it out and get Fortnite back what on we, the store. What have we got left? Here. The last article for the day is from The Verge. Okay. And it is Doom and Doom 2 officially get widescreen support 27 years later, three decades. <laughs> Why have they done this? I have no idea. <laughs> but three decades later. Doom is the game that just won't die no matter how many times you blast those demons away. Bethesda has seen fit to give the 27 year old game quite the number of upgrades this year after adding a 60 FPS support. 
the com and okay. community made add-on support. The re-release of Doom and Doom 2 are now officially getting a 16, uh, 16, 16 by 9, by nine widescreen support as well. Yeah. According to Bethesda, the company has actually modified the original Doom renderer to natively provide 16x9 without letterboxing, <laughs> giving you a wider oh, field of view weird. on the original game instead of the ugly black borders. Sure. Right? Mm. The lack of letterbox should be particularly handy for some owners of the Switch, iPhone and Android versions of the game, sure. since those big borders will no longer cut into their already tiny screens on Android. The game's Doom and Doom 2 now support 90 hertz and 120 hertz on devices as well. Why? But okay. That's not all. The engine now sports the hacked mods, gyro aiming on Nintendo Switch, uh, control support on iOS, and now touch controls. It feels okay. like Bethesda's building up a lot of goodwill that. these with these re-releases of Doom after <laughs> after officially releasing them with a particular word piece of DRM that will make it quickly decided to delete. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's so weird. I mean, I, I never... guess it's goodwill with like retro gamers, like, but like. Um, what is Doom and Doom Two? What? I know it's a game. It's like it. uh, it's like one of the original like FPS games. Okay, it was it was out before I was even born. Thank yeah, you it's like I'm a baby compared to this game. Deal with it. Uh, I'll show you gameplay of it off off screen. Okay. Like, I'll probably it's probably not like copyright for me to go sure. to somebody else's video and show you. Okay. Uh yeah, but it's like a one of the first. Game games. I don't want to say it's like Call of Duty because it's like a slideshow compared to that, right? Okay. Uh, and the graphics are like awful, but like it's 30 years old, so it's going to be. Yeah. But it's like that first person with a gun sure. shooting and shooting at like demons. Like Street and... Fighter? No, it's 3D. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like a 3D maze you're okay, going through. Just show me off, off, off stream. I don't have a clue what you're about. All right. Well, that's it for this half of the show. Yeah. That's the news for the week. We Thank you all for listening to it. Yeah. We will now go on a break and be back in a bit.